Would you just look at how beautiful that looks? Would you look at how ugly that is? Let's change that because that has to go on the front of that. Here we go. Okay, so there is nothing really wrong with this setup. It's got a pup engine, a hydraulic tank, a valve body, and um, the hydraulics that go to these cylinders here, um, the two lift cylinders. But it's kind of a, like these, these arms swing out and that's what um, allows it to lock uh, more or less. Um, and then there's also safety pins that go onto this bracket and slide underneath. Now I looked at this a bunch and tried to see if I could automate that a little better because there's three steps to it. Um, you got to pull these pins out of these brackets. Um, we have to take a lock out of this bracket here that goes down to the trailer. I'm going to flip these up. Um, even if I could uh, have a hydraulic ram that slid the pins in and out, uh, that might help or make it seem a little bit less barbaric or primitive but um it does work and that's that's the problem uh so i'm not sure the swing cylinders get in the way they do they're able to rock so um i'd have to build a, a setup that that pivots and i'm just not sure if it's worth all that effort or just slide the pins out like it works the way it does so i think for now i'm gonna start by taking the toolboxes off We'll straighten some of these lips before we paint it. We'll clean it. And then um, a new valve body for it because that one is broken and doesn't feel great. Uh, these are bent, so we've got to straighten those. I'm going to pull this toolbox off, get rid of everything underneath here. And then we'll build really nice um, stainless uh, lids for it and spots for our chains. I don't, I don't like this janky setup. Um, nothing about it gets me excited so um yeah we're gonna we're gonna at least strip it down problem is i need the trailer in about a week and i don't have time to remanufacture everything it's our open house and i'd really like to tow the tank to the open house so uh for now i think i'm going to clean it and paint it so we can get it through the safety and then um we'll uh maybe put that inside in the winter and change it up We'll see. But anyway, we're gonna start by stripping her down. Here we go. So this is the valve control for our trailer. So it's a two spool open center valve, meaning that we can control two different functions, the up and down on the legs and then the, the arms that swing down to support the gooseneck on the transport truck. Um, but every valve is basically the same. So to rebuild these, super simple. Um, you take the cover off the front and the back. In the back is a spring uh, that just centers the spool valve back to its neutral position and in neutral the oil is able to come in and go straight through the valve and right back out the out in and out are very important because of the relief valve the relief valve protects the entire system so if you deadhead the cylinder meaning that you're pulling on your valve the cylinder goes all the way to the end the oil can't go anywhere else either you're going to blow a, a hydraulic line or bend the cylinder or pop the cylinder apart um, and the protection of that is your relief valve. So if you have your out and your in backwards, um, when you when you pull on your valve, you're eliminating the relief valve and you're, and you're gonna deadhead the system. So everything should be marked in and out for your relief valves. You can play with your relief valve and um, put the pressure up higher if 
uh, if you need to, but then you'll be blowing hydraulic lines and bending cylinders and all that. So don't do that unless you, you do it. I didn't tell you to do that, but you, don't do it. <laughs> um, to rebuild them, pop the covers off front and back and um, you'll be exposed to your uh, valve. This is a machine fit spool that fits inside the body. So when you're pulling on your handle, you're covering up ports and opening ports to redirect the oil flow. So when you pull on it, it pressures on one side. If you push on it, it pressures the other side and it allows the opposite side to go to relief. So the, cylinder, the oil coming out of your cylinder is able to go back out to the outside. Um, you cannot mix these two up because they are machined for this, um, specifically to each other and it's thousands of an inch so there's no other seals in there except for a couple o-rings right in the very outside so there's one there and then there's another it just sits in a groove underneath here and that basically just tries to stop the oil that makes it past your um your spool if it's worn and you can see that this one is starting to wear you can see that it's uh um discolored on this section um, you can take thousand grit sandpaper and um, or emery cloth, sorry, soak it in oil and try to clean it up. But basically, if they're scored, it's done um, and, and you can't use it anymore. That's when you head to Princess Auto and you just buy a new spool valve. They've got all the hydraulic systems um, on the shelf ready to go and you can buy them online too. I think we're okay with this one. We're going to throw a couple new O-rings in it and um, she's good to go for everything that we need it to do. Here we go. Okay, so a few things we got to do to uh, before we even think about painting. Um, this is the bar that goes down onto the frame of the Kenworth, and that's what holds the whole unit up in the air when I pull away from the trailer. Um, here you can see there's a couple cracks in the welds, so I need to uh, grind that out a bit deeper and then put a bunch of weld on there. Otherwise, I'm going to wreck up the paint uh, when we get to it. If you can see down here, the bar is actually bent a little bit. Nothing seems to be cracked. So what I'm gonna do is just run to town, grab another piece of C and stick that on the outside. So it'll look like it's straight without sacrificing any of the welds and would take probably about 40 minutes rather than three hours to cut that out and weld it back in again. Okay, another thing that needs some attention is the supports for the trailer. Now you can see this is bent in and it's not cracked or anything, but this bar is actually bent. Um, it's supposed to tuck inside and I can't. So what I've done is just put a piece of steel up in there that will push up against the top of the steel there. And then I'm gonna use the hook that's in my floor, tie it down to the trailer and then push on the outside uh, to try and get this bend out of it. So, um, I might have to heat it, but I'm gonna take a floor jack and a block, just push on the outside. For now, I'm just gonna try and straighten this so it'll tuck in. Maybe later I'll replace it and fix it, but I finally get to use that hook. I'm gonna roll the Bronco out of the way for a second, and then um, should be pretty straightforward.
Okay, so that actually worked out pretty good. Um, you can see I'm tucked inside there. I might have to hit it with a hammer just for now, but um, I really need to get some paint on this thing. So I think eventually I'm gonna cut out the bar and just redo this section because I can't really get into that top pin on its own without hitting it, but um, it will be functional and safe for what we needed to do it for uh, this last little fall yet. It goes down fine it, and it tucks away far enough. It just could be better. Okay, we got the color on, couple spots on the cylinders I had to clean up yet, uh, knock the rust off, but I have just enough time, I think the paint's dry, to add some color, and here we go. So the valve body's in here nice, I'm starting to tuck in my hoses, but what I'm missing is my main trailer plug wire. Now they didn't have seven wire 12 gauge in town, um, so I'll, I'll loop all that up nice and neat afterwards, but I want to include that seven wire plug in there. So we'll put some grates and everything in there and a nice lid to the top, nice stainless. But before I do that, I got to put the supports back in it again. Um, and I want to make sure that I, I know exactly how the trailer works before I make any toolboxes and regret doing it because I might hit something. So I've straightened the support that goes onto the frame of the Kenworth and it looks pretty decent. Um, so from here, I just need to shorten them a little bit so it tucks inside the frame and doesn't hit my fenders. So I, I cut off the pins, um, grinded them up, and I'm just going to slide them in just a couple inches so they'll tuck inside the frame of the gooseneck and that'll make it so it doesn't hit my fenders. If it does, we might have to go to a half fender. I hope not to, but I think just tucking them in will work just fine. <laughs> Now I gotta attach the gooseneck to the trailer without actually having it hooked up to the truck. Now, this is kind of an issue. Um, I hope that if I put the weight on the hooks, it will support the gooseneck, but I don't think it will. So um, I think what I'm gonna do is slide this whole unit ahead and then see if I can get in behind there with the tractor and push the trailer basically into the gooseneck until I can hook the hydraulics up with the Kenworth and then push down on the landing gear. I think that'll work. It'll work? I don't know. We'll try it. Plans might change, but here we go. So what actually ended up working out better is pushing on it with a forklift into the gooseneck into the trailer rather than pushing from behind because there's actually taper on it. So if I was to push from behind, it would push the gooseneck away. So now I've chalked the trailer and I can, I can just use the forklift to push in beside. Now I've got the Kenworth already hooked up to the landing gear 
and I just need to see if it'll grab the hook. Can you see the hook down in there? It is underneath the trailer, and if all goes well and I plumbed everything properly, I should be able to lift up on the trailer um, with my handle. Okay, so I'm pushing on it with the forklift, and... Oh no, I have a leak. You see that little bit of oil? Uh, I hope it's just a loose fitting. Um, I'm sure it is, everything's new. I gotta grab a wrench, hold on. Okay, tightened up the hose. Now for all the marbles, look on the hose. Oh, it's going down. Oh, there we go, grab the hook. It's trailer going up. The gooseneck's not going up, but the trailer is. This is success, boys. This is success. Okay, so now I gotta get some chains and I gotta tie the gooseneck down. Um, I'll, I'll flip the landing gear down. Let me think for a minute. I think that's what I gotta do. All right, that's a success, boys. There she is, a matching low boy trailer to a beautiful K100, both that I basically built. Um, the red actually matches the Kenworth really close. I'm happy with it. Um, I need a few lights and a few odds and ends things to do to make it official yet, but we have a low boy attached to our K100. Wow. All right, boys, there she is. I got the lights working. I got it hooked up to the K100. It is wet and rain it's raining. Um, I am actually done for the night and I am dead tired, but as she sits, I can take it to the show tomorrow. Now, um, not everything's 100%, but probably, probably be okay. If it's not raining, I'll take the tank. If it is raining, maybe not, I don't know. Now keep in mind, I've never done this before. I've never unhooked this trailer. I've never driven a, a low boy, RGN. Um, so yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> We made it to the show, and I, I, I'm gonna tell you, it's pretty nerve-wracking. I got my license a year ago in the Kenworth. I've got, I've only got about a thousand, fifteen hundred kilometers under my belt, and I've never loaded and unloaded a low boy. But we made it to the show. I loaded up the tank. I took it. The, no issues with the trailer whatsoever. The brakes work great. Um, it does everything that it's supposed to. I'm so, so happy that we brought the trailer and the tank to the show. It was an absolutely incredible event. So the trailer is 100% legal now. We're not done here. We're going to add some nice stainless lids and toolboxes for chains and tools and whatever else. But um, for the purpose of this build right now, we'll we're done, but we'll probably include this with a deck plate on the KW. There are more videos coming out. We'll be towing some loads with it. Last video on this series, the rest of the videos are us gonna be hauling awesome equipment from all over the country, and I can't wait to show you guys that. Okay, so how did we even get here? How did we end up with a tank and a transport truck and a low boy? I didn't even have my license. So it's funny, we bought the cab over the 79 Astro, which was, I just wanted to make a pulling truck, have some fun with it. It was garbage, we couldn't do it. That led to the tank, which then led to the cab over, which then led over to the trailer, which led to me working outside because now everything's getting too big for my shop. So honey, if you're watching this, remember that really nice vacation we were gonna go on? 
We might have to just build a bigger shop instead. <laughs> she probably didn't see this video anyway. <laughs> I'm definitely outgrowing my shop, <laughs> but we are going to do some sea containers and some storage behind the shop just so we can kind of keep the driveway clean, start putting some of these things inside. Um, but yeah, it's funny how things just escalate. The whole purpose of the Kenworth and the trailer and the tank is to do off-road recovery and a lot of people said well like the tank hasn't done anything we're still working on it we had the uh guys from the museum come down they went over the whole brake system they tightened the tracks we realized a couple parts that we need for it to be able to go into a field pull a combine out of a hole pull a backhoe out of a hole pull an excavator out of a hole pull transport trucks out of the ditch when there's snowstorms and stuff like that so there's lots more stuff coming but i'm just a one-man show it's it's me when something breaks and and stuff does break so um enough of that rambling thank you for watching thank you for watching the entire video we can slap something together call it done do one quick shot down the road and and move on to the next project that will pay our bills but that's not what we're about at the boss garage and i want to motivate you guys to get out there and work on it it's not a weekend thing it's not a it's not a crunch thing in a week um good quality takes time and you need to get out there and work on it because it is 100 percent worth it we got the chickens approval we've got um <laughs> mto's approval it's safety and that's the way it should be so remember get out there and get filthy because if you're not filthy you're not rich there we go